Hi, I'm Renault from More Mountains, and today we're going to see what's new in the brand new 4.2 update of Feel. It's a major new version that comes with tons of cool features. I've put the link to the release notes in the description. Go check it out if you want the full list. The first big addition to this new version is the automatic shaker setup. This will let you set up a feedback shaker or camera rig or whatever it needs automatically in just one click. We'll get back to that in just a minute. Then we have new feedbacks. We've got URP2D lights feedbacks, visual effects graph feedbacks, full support for Cinemachine 3 for all Cinemachine feedbacks. Then also a new image material feedback, animation crossfade, and material set property feedbacks. But that's not all. The update also comes with performance improvements across the board, faster domain and compile reload times, a better and more modular structure should you want to remove stuff, especially in the MM tools department, and it phases out the old legacy MM feedbacks system for good. So now it's only MMF player. Before we move on and have a look at all that good stuff, just a message about updating. Before you do, you want to make sure you have a commit or a backup to roll back to in case things go wrong. And once that's done, uh, you simply remove the old field folder and from your package manager, you import the new one. After that, if you get errors, if you get MMF players complaining about stuff, simply reload your scene, reload your prefabs that contain these MMF players and the issue should go away. Once again, this phases out the MM feedback system. So if your project is still using them, update to MMF players first and then do the 4.2 update. All right, let's dive in and let's have a look at all the new stuff. All right, so let's have a look at this Soto Shaker setup thing. So I'm in a new scene. I just put two cubes there. As you can see, nothing fancy. One of them is rotating and that's it. No post-processing, no complex setup, very simple stuff. Let's say I want to improve on that and I want to add a vignette effect when I do something in this game. So I'm going to create a MMF player and object and I'm going to add an MMF player to it. Typically, I would go then and add a vignette post-processing feedback. But if I press play on this and then play my feedback, you can see that nothing happens. The reason for that is we don't even have a post-processing volume in our scene. So in the past, what I would do is uh, create a post-processing layer on my camera, then a post-processing volume, then I would add vignette to that and add a shaker and everything. Uh, this takes time and sometimes you don't want to do it manually. If you do want to do it manually, then uh, you'll find detailed steps for that in the documentation. But let's say you don't want to do that and you just want it to work, then you would go in your vignette feedback here, unfold automatic setup, press the automatic shaker setup button. Uh, you would get a console message telling you that you're all set and then you can press play. And now that your scene is running, you can press the play button here. And as you can see, we've got our vignette working. And this is all well and good, but let's say you want to do that for more than just a vignette. Uh, let's say we add a camera shake feedback and then we add a camera zoom and I don't know, an audio MM sound manager sound. So for this one, I would have to specify what, what sound I want to play. Uh, let's say this thing, whatever. Um, but I also want, I don't know, a fade. And let's end with a lens distortion. All right, so I have all of these. So in the past, that would be a lot of manual setup, right? For a camera shake, you need a camera rig. For a sound manager sound, you need uh, MM sound manager. Uh, same for the fade, you would need a, f a fader and so on and so on. Uh, we can even add, let's say, a freeze frame. All right, so all of that, manual setup, if you know what you're doing, 
it's a few minutes. Um, but why do it manually when you have the automatic shaker setup button? Let's press that. We get a bunch of logs in the console that you can forget about. You can just clear them if you're not interested, but they explain to you what changes were made to the scene. And it's important uh, to understand that this is like the system doing a best effort at trying to set up things for you. If you're not comfortable with the system making changes to your scene, then do that manually. Uh, the system will try and move your camera to a camera rig, will add a sound manager, will add um, a canvas to have a fade and so on and so on. So it's important that you know that before you press these buttons, they are destructive in a way. So at least have a backup to roll back to if you, if you need it. And so now that we've added all that stuff automatically, let's just press play and see if it works. So I'm going to find my test player in the scene. I'm not going to press play on all of that because that would be uh, probably, well, let's do it. Yeah. So everything happens at once and it's a bit weird. Uh, but if I test them individually, now I have a fade out, fade in feedback that works. I have a sound. Honestly, not sure if you will hear it because it's a new OBS setup, but let's pretend you do. Camera zoom, camera zoom, uh, camera shake. Every time I press it, lens distortion now, all working and a freeze frame. Not super visible, let's make it very obvious. You can see that every time I press, I stop time. Well, now that's not so much a freeze frame as freeze half second, but there you go. Very simple, uh, works for a ton of feedbacks, mostly all um, BI, RP, URP, HDRP, post-processing, also everything time, camera related, um, lots of good stuff. I hope this will save you time and let me know if you uh, enjoy it. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you today is the URP 2D lights feedback. So to showcase that, I've created a very simple scene. As you can see, it's uh, just three sprites and I've taken the time to set up Shadowcaster 2Ds for them. Um, so what I'm going to do next is go into light here and create a spotlight 2D. Right now it doesn't show much. I'm going to increase the radius for it. I'm going to change its intensity to five and I'm going to add shadows because everything looks better like that. So in game view, everything looks good. And now I'm going to create an empty object. I'm going to add a MMF player to it and I'm going to go here in light, light to the URP and that gives me my feedback. I'm going to drag and drop my newly created light into its bound light field. And uh, I'm going to turn off starts off because all light is already on when the scene starts. I'm going to press play in the editor. And now when I press play, you can see uh, stuff is happening because I'm modifying the intensity, the fall off, the shadow strengths, everything at once. So I'm going to turn these off for now and I'm going to change, let's say, the uh, intensity. I want to remap it to five so you can see that when I press play, now it's much bigger. If I were to put it to 15, you know, it would be even bigger. Um, I can change the color over time. So let's say that I want to change it to red and then, I don't know, a blue. I'm going to do that over five seconds. And you can see that the shadow color changes like that. So very, very simple and easy to use feedback, very similar to the light feedback uh, for regular lights. I hope you will like this new feedback. I hope you will like this new version and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.